Hi, uh, my name's Doug, and um, I want to make a video here about the Technics um, RS-1500 tape deck specifically. Um, but generally this applies to all of the RS series um, Technics tape decks. And uh, I, uh, a friend of mine gave me this one. I'm sort of a hobbyist, uh, audio hobbyist. I've built um, five or six tube amps, and I've built some preamps, and um, just sort of electronics hobbyist, and uh, um, this is the first tape deck I've owned, and uh, I've enjoyed sort of slowly but surely going through the entire thing and um, rebuilding it. So uh, one of the most difficult things that I uh, ran into were the bearings in the unit, and um, particularly the capstan bearings, and so... Um, I had uh, a bearing noise, and of course I googled it, and I got on all of the uh, the forums, like the tape head forums and stuff like that, and uh, read everything. You know, I was obsessively <laughs> read everything, um, as I'm sure you have already done, or maybe you're in process of doing if you've come across my video. And uh, there's something that's sort of like missing from the internet, and... Uh, that is how to replace the bearings in the capstan of the Technix uh, tape decks. And uh, I think the reason for this is it's viewed as being very difficult. And it doesn't help that like the back of the capstan motor literally says, um, never open this. It kind of has like a warning. I, it's sitting over there. I'll read it in a minute. But uh, it's got this warning that just like is meant to scare you like never never open this device um, you know bad things will happen springs will fly out <laughs> it'll never work again whatever um, and so I didn't want to open it like I'm you know mechanically inclined and I feel like I could fix most things but it seemed like the internet was telling me basically don't don't open this saying it's a bad idea a lot of people were sort of mirroring that and there were a couple of people who said yes we have rebuilt these, but we don't rebuild them now anymore. And I contacted a couple of people, and one person said, I don't rebuild those anymore because it's too much of a pain in the butt. And I contacted another person who said, yes, I do rebuild those, but I don't have any time right now, and it's expensive, and blah, blah, blah. And so I basically sort of hit this dead end, and I really was unhappy, like, having this tape deck, um, you know, having this ticking sound and you may have this as well if you're watching this video it's a little ticking grinding sound coming from the capstan and um it just means it has ball bearings in there and it just means they're going bad the grease has hardened up or come out or whatever it is that's happened to it and um and so i didn't want to brick my machine by pulling my capstan motor apart and then realizing that it was I was in over my head and couldn't couldn't fix it and so um, I just was using it I continued to work on it and then on eBay I found um, another capstan motor and it was the same thing it was like an as is capstan motor for like 200 bucks um, and it just said right in the description bearings are bad you know it has bad bearings or whatever and so I thought hey this is a great opportunity for me to uh, to do this because I thought I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll buy the motor I'll take that motor apart and try and replace the bearings if I completely mess it up I'll still have another motor and so uh, I bought the motor pulled it apart um, got the bearings out uh, ordered the new bearings um, got the bearings in put the bearings in slapped the motor back together um, Put it in the machine, worked great. And I thought, am I just did I just get lucky on this one or whatever? And so I pulled the other motor out, obviously, the original motor, pulled it apart, pulled the bearings out, put the new bearings in, put it back in the machine. So now I have two, you know, uh, capstan motors, and I'm gonna sell one on eBay. But that's neither here nor there. But what I want to do is I want to contribute to the community, and where I hit a brick wall on the internet with this capstan bearing problem, um, I want this video to basically be about how you can replace the bearings in your, in your Technics capstan motor. And um, if you are inclined, it, uh, mechanically inclined, you got a steady hand, 
Um, you got a good head on your shoulders for this sort of thing. Um, I think you can do it too. Now, if you, uh, if you're not, you know, about working on your stuff, I, I'm just a disclaimer. If you, if you break your machine, um, I take no responsibility for that. And if you feel like you are not confident after watching this video, doing this yourself, then don't do it yourself. <laughs> Find somebody else to do it for you. So, um, this is, uh, this is not like um, my permission to go and break your machine or whatever, but um, I just, it turned out to be a lot less difficult than I was led to believe that it would be, and I just wanted to um, put this out there as a resource for people who may want to um, rebuild their CAPS 10 motors and keep these old decks alive. So that's my intro, and now let me show you. All right, <clears throat> here's my machine. You can see that it does indeed work here. I can. Oh, that's backwards. So I got the tape on backwards right now, but you know, it's all in good shape here. So you see, I'm not bullshitting you. I actually have restored the machine. It's working great, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Here's the. Uh, <clears throat> Here's the other capstan motor. I've already replaced uh, the bearings in this one, but I'm willing to pull it back apart and walk you through um, each step of the process. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Each thing I do, I'm gonna turn the camera off, I think, while I'm actually doing the thing that I'm telling you that I'm gonna do. Um, after explaining what I'm gonna do, I'll probably turn the camera off and, uh, or set the camera, maybe I'll put the camera on a tripod or something and do the thing I do, and then I'll sort of zoom in and sort of point out what exactly happened there, what the tools I'm using. Yeah, let's go over that. So we've got the tools here. This has a couple of, you know, a few sort of like um, spring, you know, circle spring clip things. All right, so please be kind to me in the comments. I know that it's not called a circle spring clip thing. Uh, I've forgotten the name of it. But you do need a special tool for that. Um, I recommend that you get this, it's cheap. I got this, I don't know, for 15 bucks on Amazon or something like that. You can use it for other things when you're done using it for this, but um, there's definitely a point which you'll get to where uh, if you don't have something like this, you're gonna run into problems. So you get that, you need the appropriate sized uh, Allen wrench, some pliery type things, uh, some hammery type things, another pair of pliers perhaps, a screwdriver, um, little things like that. Um, the motor itself, um, it's easy to take out of the deck. And so if you can't figure out how to get the motor out of your deck easily, um, you should not be attempting this repair. So I'm not gonna explain how to get the motor out, but that should become very clear to you after opening up the machine. Your motor will probably have some sort of goop on it that is covering up the two Allen holes here, and also is sort of sealing this back area right here. And so that is loosened up with uh, acetone. So you just take some acetone, um, maybe rubbing alcohol would do it, I used acetone, sort of like dampen those gluey things, and then after a while they'll become kind of gummy, and you can literally just kind of like take a toothpick or a, uh, just a little whatever you've got and just kind of peel it out and peel it off so you can access those um, hex head jam nuts and uh, so that you can then remove this clip here. So everything that you take off of this, this is how I recommend you do it and I'm going to show you how I did it, but I recommend that as you remove these maybe take a, uh, a felt tip marker or something like that and just mark them just A, B, C, D, or one, two, three, four, or whatever you wanna do. Or you could take your cell phone and just take pictures as you're taking things off. They go on in this particular order, and although the order is not, um, it's not hard to follow and it's easy to understand, and you could probably recreate it just thinking about it, um, it's better to just know how things go on. And so the back area here, before I take these off, I'll explain, you've got the C-clip that's holding the whole thing on there. We've got a washer, and then behind the washer is a spring. And by spring, what I mean is it's basically just another washer that's slightly smaller than this that's just got a bend in it, and it's made out of some kind of spring steel. And so when you push this on there, 
it just sort of tightens up this whole thing so that this doesn't wiggle or jingle or do anything weird like that. And so there's another one of those actually inside the unit as well. Um, another warning as we get inside here, uh, there are electronic components and there's a lot of magnet wire wrapped around the servo sensors and also around the sort of the main power magnet poles and that's exposed and if you slip up and you break some of that magnet wire um, it's probably going to be really tricky to repair it and so you're going to want to be careful as you get into the unit. The other thing I would say to do, and this is what I've done, after you remove the unit, um, just take the capstan um, pull section here and just wrap it up with some, some tape um, because if that gets dinged or scraped or whatever um, that's going to keep this from working for you in the in your machine because it's going to fuck up your tape. Here's that that uh, <laughs> the warning on the back. What does it say? Caution: Never remove this flywheel. It alone cannot be replaced. It's like uh, just they want to frighten you. Not don't take this apart, or you uh, you know you'll break your machine. But um, I guess there's a possibility you could do that. But um, I found it to be a lot less difficult than all of that. I really love this machine. Everything goes together with uh, plugs. Everything is very modular. Everything comes out. And then I rebuilt the entire, I recapped the whole machine and replaced every bearing and re-oiled all the sleeve bearings and uh, restored the entire thing. And so I'm really happy with how the machine is uh, just comes apart and goes back together so easily. So you'll appreciate that as well. If you, if you end up working on this machine. So I'm going to stop the recording here for now and maybe get a tripod and then start taking this thing apart. All right, so here we go. Um, first things first, after you've gotten the goop off, you're just going to, just going to pop this C-clip off here, right there. So C-clip, here's the big washer. Right there, and underneath is the spring. You can see it's just a washer. It's got kind of a, yeah, but you'll you'll see that as soon as you take yours apart. So there you go. So you can see the remnants here of the glue that was on this thing. So now at first I thought, because you can see that this thing has been balanced, and I thought, oh man, I need to really pay attention to the orientation that this goes on the shaft. But as it turns out, uh, you don't have to worry about that at all because the shaft has two flat spots and those line up with the two jam nuts. And so there's no worry at all about this thing um, going back together in the wrong orientation. So this is important, obviously. When you are doing this, make sure that you're, uh, you've got the right Allen wrench, it fits in there snugly, um, et cetera, et cetera, because you you wouldn't want to strip those nuts out because if you did that, then you know you fucked. So don't do that. But I have not over tightened mine because I've learned over the years that you don't do that. It's a bad idea. So back those out a little bit. And this is the easy part, surprisingly easy part. The whole thing just, uh, the whole back of the flywheel just slides right off. Ta da! Pretty nice, huh? So, this bit in the middle is really the motor part. You can see this is where the, uh, actually gets its torque from there. And uh, it's an uh, induction deal. And uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, I guess, is this. This is the servo part right here. So this little guy right here is magnetic. Or something. I don't know if it's magnetic, but it you know works a magnetic way, and it goes across. It goes across this stuff right here. It's like a printed circuit board with a trace that just goes back and forth and back and forth around and around it goes, and they line up perfectly with these little teeth edges here. You can see, and so when they are lined up you get a pulse and when they're in between you get a null and the deck uses that pulse which happens you know you can see several hundred times per revolution um, helps helps the deck know exactly how fast the motor is going so 
Uh, be careful with this. These look delicate. They look like they could break easily. Um, you know, take this guy right here, be gentle with it, wrap it up in a towel or something, and put it aside. You don't need it right now. All right, next thing to do, you look, can see down in here, this is the tricky part. Uh, you can see my bearings are already replaced in this one. Very nice and smooth. No noise at all. I actually ran this unit in my machine for several months before I got around to rebuilding and replacing the original unit. And uh, it's been working great. So, But you can see down in here are these little servo sensing jobs right there and they have tiny little magnet wire going down to the circuit board down there. Um, if you slip when you're taking off this little ring here and it pops out, your, you know, your little tool pops out, uh, you're going to run the risk of damaging those little wires. And if you do that, um, you could probably repair those, but it looks like um, not the sort of thing that you would want to spend your time doing. That takes this from, you know, a uh, several hour job or whatever, um, you know, into a much more serious situation. So, let's see, make sure I'm still recording here. Yes, I am. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tool. You, this tool will come with all all manner of little little tools here. These kind of look the same, actually. I don't know. I think it's this one that I need. I'm going to pay close attention as I do this. So I need these to uh, to squeeze open when I am squeezing these here. Let's see. So use this this in through here. I'll cut this part of the tape out because I should have done this before. All right, so we're looking to put this in here, spread that little guy out there, and pull that up off the shaft. Um, just, you know, be careful when you do it. I'm going to stop talking while I do it because <laughs> I don't want to fuck up my motor. I'm going to try to sell this thing on eBay, and so if I mess it up for you right now on tape, uh, uh, it'll be money out the out the window or whatever. All right, so no problem there. There's your little C spring spring clamp clip spring clip. I don't know what you call it. So I'm going to put that in a different pile so that we can remember how things go here. Um, but it goes spring clip, and then you get the washer here. You can see I've sort of numbered these. One, so I know how to put them back on. Um, so that's the washer. Then underneath, just kind of like on the outside, here we go. This is the spring. This is what kind of holds the whole thing together. It kind of squeezes the bearings a little bit. Um, and then you've got a washer here. This actually sits between the spring. Okay, I'm just gonna carefully... It's kind of gotten stuck in the, uh, the groove. There, there we go gotten stuck in the groove of the uh, the C-clamp. So we have a little plastic, it's kind of, I don't know if it's a plastic or a phenolic or a something, little ring there that sits up against the actual bearing. Set that there. You can see the bearing is actually starting to come out here already. I'm going to pull the shaft through now, carefully. Yeah, carefully. It was supposed to be careful and slow, but whatever. Pull it right out. There we go. Oh, you can actually see there's another wash in here that I I didn't see. I'm going to just grab that. I have to say forceps. Always keep a pair of those around for just this sort of thing. All right. So you can actually see I've written, what have I written on that? Three, four. <laughs> I'll remember how to put this back together. I have it on tape after all. All right. So you can see that the uh, the shaft has now come out of the front. And if you're lucky, if you're lucky, the bearings will just pop out like this. Now, 
That didn't happen for either of my motors. The bearings were, were I wouldn't say they were pressed in, but they were, they were in there. And so what I ended up having to do was carefully, now let's pretend these bearings are still in there. Let me pull this bearing off the, actually I'm, it's kind of stuck on there right now, but let's pretend there's bearings in both sides of this thing. What I had to do was carefully, now you see there are C-clips on the inside of this. I don't know if you can see that. Those keep the bearings from going straight through the middle of the shaft there. Or I guess the, uh, the housing or whatever you want to call it. Um, so you can't just put a screwdriver through the top and the middle of the top bearing and just hit around the entire edge of the, the other side of the bearing. You can't do that. Um, you can only knock it out where there's a gap in that little clip. And so that's what you got to do. What you do is you just hold your motor like this, or you could start on this side. Be careful not to damage your windings. And you just go through through the middle of the bearing, you know, like this. And you just shine a flashlight in there and find where that clip right there has a gap. Put your screwdriver on the edge of that bearing, not in the middle, because that's not a good place to hit a bearing, on the edge, and just tap, tap it out. You know, um, you may have to use a little force, but the old bearings are bad anyway. If you ding up the bearing a little bit, you're fine. Even if you, I actually kind of gouged the side of my housing a little bit, didn't matter. When I put the new bearings in, I actually used a little bit of sand because the new bearings were kind of a tight fit. I just used a little bit of sandpaper with my finger and just kind of, I removed these little C-clips with my tool here. I'm not gonna do that right now, but it's easy to do. Pull them out, sand the inside of the tube, just take your time and then until your bearing goes in nice and snug, but not too tight. All right, so let's talk about the bearings. The bearings themselves, um, they are, let me just look at this and make sure I'm telling you the truth. They are 6001Z bearings, 6001Z. And uh, it's a very, very common bearing. You can find them anywhere online. Um, I have had a lot of luck with Fushi bearings from China. They're very inexpensive, but they've always been very quiet. So with these bearings, I think it's less about um, the, the you know the rating of the bearing. I just use ABEC five here. Um, and it's more about the, what's the quietest bearing you can find. And so I think there are plenty of bearings that are maybe higher durability than these bearings. But I've always found that the Fushi bearings, are just really quiet, and that's been true with these as well. So I got these Fushi uh, 6001Z bearings right off eBay. It takes a long time for them to come in the mail, so if you're impatient, find them somewhere else. And then, um, yeah, just put them right on in. So after you do it, you gotta, sometimes the bearing will get kind of stuck on the shaft here, and you can just kind of go around the outside of it here and kind of, you know, do this sort of sort of deal. You know, or you can turn it, you put it, you know, wedge it in there and just kind of go around. And um, the tolerances are close on this, and so sometimes hard to get them on and off. But if you have trouble getting it on and off the shaft, do the same thing with the sandpaper. Like, let's say your new bearings don't fit on there real good. Just, you know, spend a little time with some sandpaper. You know, kind of go around the shaft right there until your new bearings go on and off nicely. All right. So that's that. So basically you got your motor apart. You got your bearings out. Um, you got your new bearings in the mail. You know, got them, and in they go. So easy peasy. Here we go. Here's the front the shaft there with the, the new bearing. <clears throat> Here we go. Here's the rear bearing right there. Just gonna be careful when I do this because I don't want to damage the. Uh, the uh, once again, I don't want to damage the 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 wire, the magnet wire going to those sensors there. All right, and so we just put everything back together the way we found it. So remember, this one went on first, and then this guy. Yep. Then the spring. Then the washer. Then the C clip. So I'm going to use my tool 
to get my seat clip on again. Now, you'll when you put the seat new seat clip on, the spring is holding the washer up above where the little groove is for that. And so you kind of have to you have to kind of wiggle it down, tap on it a little bit to get it to to sink up into that groove. It's not difficult, but just keep that in mind. I'm going to stop talking and concentrate as I do this because this is the bit that seems like it would be the easiest to mess up. All right, so you can see I've just tapped it, tapped it into the groove there. I think it is in the groove. I just want to make sure I do, in fact, have it in the groove. So now I've popped it out of the groove, so that means I did have it in the groove. <laughs> you know, just double check, make absolutely sure that all is well with that clip. All right, so now we're back there. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Everything moving nice and smooth. So this is the other tricky part to this. Um, show you how it works. So this uh, needs to kind of be gauged. You can use a feeler gauge. I think that's a little bit more than you really need. It doesn't have to be exact. But this will slide onto the shaft to the point where this uh, right here will rub on <clears throat> on this trace right here and you can see that as the bearings in this unit wore out this is the one I got on eBay that had bad bearings the bearings had gotten enough play in them that these had actually begun to hit the trace and so I don't know if you can see that right there but there were a couple spots where it had actually sort of worn the trace down now it hadn't opened the trace I didn't have to repair the trace you can if you get one that you need to repair the trace on you can do it um, you just uh, use a little solder or whatever you got to do to repair that trace. Uh, but mine wasn't, so what I did is I actually just took some lacquer, some, um, poly, uh, some oil-based polyurethane lacquer, and just, sorry, I've got somebody on a mini bike outside my house right now. I don't know what the deal is. I'm going to pause actually while they're making this noise. Oh wait, it sounds like they're leaving now. All right, so, like I was saying, uh, I just put some lacquer back over it and I think it's fine. So, but this will slide on to the point. So you want it to be basically as close as it can get to that trace without actually touching it. And so you can do this a couple of ways. I did it just by feel. Like I just slid it closer and closer uh, until it was so close that it would you could hear it that it was rubbing and I don't know if you can you won't be able to hear it or whatever but um, and then I sort of backed it off a little bit and you can see actually um, I don't have a flashlight right here and I'll probably have to go get one in a second but you can see where the bolt holes go in um, make sure I'm still recording uh, you can see where the bolt holes you can actually see the circuit board there with the trace on it and the gears um, and so one thing that you could do, and this is what I probably do right now, just uh, because I'm on video and I don't want to look like a total amateur, is I'm probably going to get some business cards and I'm going to cut them up into uh, little strips and I'm just going to put them in there uh, while I'm tightening up the motor to, to just make sure that, that gear is close to that trace on that circuit board but not touching it. So I'm going to give that a try. All right, so I should mention that um, if you don't get the, the, t the, you know, the teeth close enough to the uh, trace and you put this back in your machine, the machine will not, um, it'll, the, the, uh, the quartz lock um, for the speed will, um, will be inconsistent and occasionally, um, your speed will go haywire. 
And uh, so if that happens, you can think to yourself, well, you know, this is assuming your machine was uh, sinking fine before. You think, well, let's pull that motor back out, loosen up those jam nuts, not a big deal. Loosen those jam nuts up and then, um, you know, recalibrate the, you know, get a little bit closer to the, get those teeth a little bit closer to the, um, let's see, to the trace. Because that's how it's judging. It's taking that minute signal of that, that's the sawtooth, you know, and it's, uh, it's amplifying that and actually turning it into this tick. You can, um, I have the manual and I've actually calibrated my machine uh, using the technique that they show in there where you actually assign, assign um, you take this, uh, the sawtooth wave and you actually sync it up with the tick that's generated by this motor. It's kind of interesting. So if you have the machine on, you've got your oscilloscope hooked up. If you spin the motor, even though it's not on, it'll actually start generating that little tick and so it's a passive system inside the motor that will actually generate that tick and that's ticking that happens several hundred times a revolution with this motor um, is actually how the machine uh, links links it up and uh, controls the speed uh, so accurately because these machines are known to be super accurate so let's see if my business card is thick enough because when I pull it out my goal is uh, to not hear any rubbing as the as the uh, the unit spins. Let's see if we've done it. Okay, so I have this width of gap now between my uh, <clears throat> my sawtooth blade right there. I'm actually just going to get a flashlight and just kind of have an eyeball on it and see if it's looks like as close as it should be and uh, you know that looks uh, pretty close I think you can actually see it um, as you turn it you know that looks like that worked pretty well and so we're just gonna go with that this is a very thin card and so I think that uh, any closer to that any closer than that and um, you run the risk as the bearings, you know, break in or whatever and have a little bit more play. You run the risk of it uh, beginning, you know, maybe in a couple of years or something of use, beginning to uh, start contacting that circuit board. If you begin to hear that, it's an easy fix. Like I say, you just pull the motor out, loosen up these little guys, and regauge it, no problem. All right, so, I mean, you can see how easy this has been. Um, I actually managed to do it all on tape. Uh, so, let's see, we just go right here, got the spring washer there, got the normal washer, got the C-clip, you know, we gotta push it down as we, as we push that C-clip on there. Um, let's see, I think the best way is just to kinda do this kinda thing. It should, it should do it. Yep. Alright. And... And that's that. So, you know, you're gonna have to do a little bit more work getting the old bearings that may be pressed in there kind of tight out, and you're gonna have to make sure your new bearings sort of fit on easily. But as you can see, the actual uh, disassembly and reassembly of this motor, uh, not as difficult as you may have been led to believe by the, <laughs> by the ominous writing on the back of this motor. Uh, you do not need to go through the process of lining up uh, with an oscilloscope um, the sawtooth wave with the tick pulse on your machine. This does not affect that. Um, whether the motor came apart or went back together, um, that's an independent variable. I've tested this. I've swapped these motors in and out of that machine without adjusting that and then measured with the oscilloscope, and it does not change the relationship of this, the sawtooth wave to the... Uh, the one the you know the tick generated by this motor um, when you uh, disassemble and reassemble this motor and so so that's that put it back in easy easy peasy plug it back in remove your tape um, good for another 40 years yep so <clears throat> I hope that was helpful
This is my contribution <laughs> to the world of Technics Reel to Reels. Um, this one's gonna go on eBay. And, uh, yeah, that's that. All right.